walk around with Chez and JJ Spawn and James Hahn yesterday and or two days ago and like you know listen to them and what they're working on or what they're trying to see and stuff like that and you pick up little things here and there and you just your golf IQ just continues to grow a bit uh and then walking around with Keith and Grayson Sig yesterday um you know, and, and just listening to how they pick apart a golf course, you know, Keith definitely pays attention to where to not miss it, right? Where's the, where's the spot for this particular pin? Can I miss it long? Probably not. That's going to, that's going to be bad news. I want to miss it short or I want to miss it left or right, wherever it might be, but he's picking apart a golf course in these practice rounds to give himself the best chance. So he doesn't have to think quite as much during the during the tournament or when he's in between seven and eight iron to a back pin he's gonna be like well short's better i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the eight versus man i i you know maybe maybe long might be great on that hole he's like i'm gonna hit a little seven if i'm back edge of the green that's fine mm -hmm. um so just you know learning how to how to pick apart a golf course there's so much nuance to this um that i just you don't you don't appreciate like People, the, the armchair viewer, tweeter at home just doesn't understand. Like something you told me today was that like a tour pro is not trying to make birdie with six iron in their hands. Yep. And I'm like, really? Because like Justin Thomas looks like he wants to make birdie with six iron in his hand. Yeah, it's it's a it's a par club, right? I, I think <laughs> like, you know, one of the things that I learned from Zinger was he said, he said, Parker, he said, you're going to have eight to ten wedge shots per day. Right? You figure the four par fives, you're probably gonna have some type of wedge in your hand, uh, whether it's around the green or you lay up and you got an 80 yard wedge shot. You're probably gonna have four other par fours where you're gonna have a wedge in your hand. That's th Those are the times where you make your birdies. He said that there was one point in his career that he ever got past feeling like um, a wedge was a birdie club and he got down to where he felt like there was like a month long stretch where he felt like it, when he had a seven iron in his hand, that felt like a birdie club. I was like, one month in your career and you felt like a seven iron was the birdie club? Every other time he felt like it was just wedges. So, I mean, if, if a guy who, I mean, I think that was the year where he had like 12 top threes in a, in a 12 month yeah. span. He's just in outer space. Yeah, he was just firing on all cylinders. And that was right before he had gotten the, the cancer diagnosis. Mm. But, you know, for, for someone, that had 12 top threes in that span to be like, and he's saying seven iron is seven the iron was like, yeah. And yeah. so I just think that's something to pick up on and be like, hmm. boy, as a, as a, as an amateur golfer, if one of the best players to ever do it is thinking that they just have that seven iron, that was like, <laughs> like, don't, don't be firing at a pin with a five, six, seven, eight iron fire, fire to the fat side of the green, give yourself some, some room to put it in the middle of the green make a 20 footer or maybe you push it and it goes closer to the hole yeah. or maybe you pull it a little bit and it's on the edge of the green but you're not gonna put yourself in a really bad spot by playing towards the middle of the greens.